Now, if you've seen any of my videos previously, you probably kept wondering, he keeps talking about this thing called the frame buffer. The frame buffer this, the frame buffer that. Frame buffer's so amazing, all this magic, it does all these amazing things. Why are we having to suffer all this stuff in X11 and Wayland? And he keeps talking about the frame buffer, but he never shows us. Well, this is the video. Finally, I'm giving you the good stuff. Probably my favorite thing in Linux, the frame buffer. Controversial, I know, nobody talks about it, but it is just magnificent, absolutely perfect. You like that? Perfect. So we're gonna finally, finally talk about the frame buffer. Um, so surprisingly, it's n not in the Arch Wiki. They don't really talk about it. They talk around it. There's all these pages about something that might use the frame buffer, all this kind of stuff. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you it running video. So we'll explain what the frame buffer is. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, we will explain what it is. So uh, I'll just tell you briefly a summary. It is rendering images or video or whatever outside of like X11 uh, Wayland. It is in your TTY, if you like. It's in the Linux console before it loads up any of the graphical environment or the graphical uh, libraries. It's um, an interesting one. So we'll just get a little bit, you know I hate r reading um, text and pages, but we're gonna go into a bit. So here we go. Wikipedia, everybody's favorite site, maybe not, probably not. Um, so here we go, Linux frame buffer is a Linux subsystem used to show graphics on a computer monitor, typically on the system console. So there you go, system console is what? Computer terminal, the TTY, fine. It was designed as a hardware independent API to give user space, so that's great for these ThinkPads, right? These old ThinkPads that, it doesn't really matter, you can run it in the graph, but you know, it's just, it's just like, again, just takes those system resources down just a little bit, and you don't have to load all this stuff. I'm, I can't tell you how much I think it's worth it. Uh, so user space software access to the frame buffer. Yeah, yeah. Using only the Linux kernel's own basic facilities and its device file system interface. So this is all built into the kernel, the actual frame buffer device, right? Avoiding the need for libraries like SVGA lib. Oh, that sounds so annoying. Which effectively implement video drives in user space. So just think of X11 Wayland. It's more than that, but. In most applications, FBDev, so FBDev is the old frame buffer device, right? And it's been superseded by the direct rendering manager subsystem. So we can have a quick look at that in a second. So this is like the modern frame buffer, okay? So they're still developing this. This isn't old hardware in that sense. These have been around for a long time, for decades, frame buffers. But this DRM, it's not the DRM you're thinking of, it's the direct rendering manager subsystem is a, um, a modern frame buffer. So these things are still been made, okay? Uh, and it's got backwards compatibility in the API, whatever, whatever. So this is what matters, the application. Oh, go away. So what do you, you can use the Linux frame buffer for? So you can, an implementation of the Linux text, cons, text Linux console doesn't use hardware text mode, blah, blah, blah. Okay, have a console show. This is always amusing to me. People make a big deal of like having Tux show an image or Libreboot have an image at the, I guess Libreboot does it, maybe they, they must do. You know, when it boots up, oh, it's so cool. And yet nobody talks about the frame buffer for like playing video in whatever, or watch, playing pic, uh, showing pictures or taking screenshots. It can do all of this. All of this it can do, taking screenshots, record your TTY, you can do it. It's I will go into all this is I'm going to keep doing that that's how good it is so um, then it's a graphical output for a display server independent of video adapter hardware and drivers graphical programs avoiding the overhead of X Windows. this is what matters this is the best stuff okay examples software so it's like video players um, text graphic uh, non graphical environment um, this is kind of irony is so links to, uh, well, W3M, I think you can technically get pictures of on it through the um, frame buffer. But here you go. Now, I will say, if anybody out there, any 
brilliant developer wants to make a frame buffer um, uh, web browser please be my guest but so you know there are technically some uh, and there's some defunct software interesting there's a frame buffer UI so it's like a basic 2d window experience so like a desktop environment or a window manager sort of I'm guessing it, it's, this is an irony to me actually for me I don't need the frame buffer though to draw a window manager just use um, what's it called uh, tmux or GNU screen which I like GNU screen actually I'll make some videos on that controversial maybe don't get at me tmux people but uh, I quite like screen I mean the only thing with those is I guess the window panes when you um, tile it it won't the tiles won't necessarily well, you probably can won't have that image showing so you probably need to use a, like a frame buffer device to draw that section out separate I don't know what I'm talking about you developers know what you're talking about. I'm not a developer. I program, but I'm not a developer, you know. Maybe I should learn. Although I can do some algorithms. Did you know that? No, of course you didn't. You just presumed. Anyway, am I in focus? I'm never in focus, probably, but that's okay. So you go some history. So it's been going since the kernel when it was 2.1, whatever. There's some more stuff about that. Who cares? So let's let's look at the modern version of the Linux frame buffer direct rendering manager or not because this is a load wall of text there's some pretty pictures you can read it all I'll put it in the description I'm sure it's very interesting but at the moment you probably not made it this far if you have well done you just want to see the good stuff I know you want to see the ThinkPad and you want to see the frame buffer I get you so there's a couple of complications here, it's not really a complication, but uh, things can be a bit funny in the, um, where I'm going to be showing you, in the uh, virtual machine, because it's just the way it is. I'm not going to be rendering, uh, I'm not going to be playing audio because I need to pass through audio, and I haven't bothered doing that because who cares. But, um, I will show you it working, it's like magic, it's just like you ready for this uh, what one thing I'd say to do is um, well we need MPV to, to show off the frame buffer let's say this is what we're going to use an example so this is just in my normal test machine so just do your usual pseudo pac-man that's just why you um, make sure your database is all up to date okay and then we want to do pseudo pac-man S M P B. Now I don't need to install it. I've already got it installed, and this is on my main machine. But I've got it installed on the other. I'm um, just saying I'm not going to be going into M P V. You can look into M P V. Do man M P V or go on the Arch Linux wiki. Maybe I'll put it in the description. Um, we're not. They're not about M P V. M P V is amazing, but we're not here for M P V. We're here to show off the frame buffer. It's not about you, M P V. It's not about you. Okay. So let's let's go into um, the virtual machine, and I will start X, okay, to prove to you. So uh, let's make this a bit bigger. So I've got this video here, Linux tips and tricks, my own magnificent video. If you haven't watched it, you should watch it. Like, comment, subscribe. You know, you should watch it. It's fantastic. It's just anyway. So if I do MPV, um, this should work on here. I'll open up another window. There we go. Now it will run slow in the virtual machine, and also because it's a .mkv file. But anyway, it will settle down if I do this. Is it going to work? Look at that. Oh yeah, what a video! Magnificent video. That's a good video. That is. Look at that handsome guy down there. Can you see him? Who's he? this guy anyway so um there we go mpv working in um just to prove to you so this is the virtual machine as you can see i'm in a virtual machine but this is um the x window environment here goes x term running uh if i do tty there you go dev pts dash zero so that is i3 okay let's kill i3 Okay, now this is this is the good stuff. So I will prove to you we are in um, the Linux terminal. So this is the TTY. 
proven it to you, okay? So, you ready for this magic? So remember, we are not loading X11, we are not loading Wayland, okay? There is no graphical environment. This is going to blow your mind, okay? So what we need to do though is, uh, because, you know, it's because it's an MKV file, I think, and because my virtual machine is a bit funny, but here you go. So we do uh, VO, dash VO, so that is um, video output, uh, oh, equals DRM, so that's the direct rendering, whatever, the modern frame buffer for Linux, okay? And I'm going to do this. Right, you ready for this? Remember, no X11, no Wayland, okay? Magic. There you go. That's all in the TTY. Nobody talks about this. It's crazy. Why does nobody talk about it? It's just... Mwah, mwah. And so you can... Uh, use the arrow keys because there's no actual mouse. This mouse is not of this system. This mouse is of um, yeah, and that's the mouse from the video before you jump down my friend. This mouse is of my testing machine showing up over the virtual machine. So yes, this is um, the virtual machine in the TTY. So you can use your keys. You can map the keys in the config for MPV and all this stuff. And as you can see, it should start settling down in a second. Should do. Whatever. So, how cool is that? Is that not the best thing in Linux ever? Just let that sink in. I'm going to let you think about this. I'm going let it sink. let it sink in. Might not blow your mind straight away, but just think. If any developer is out there who's thinking of developing a web browser, and you want to do it in the frame buffer device somehow. I mean, you can, people created user interfaces. I think somebody tried to create a web browser in a frame buffer. None of this stuff is maintained in. Nobody talks about it. None of the Linux channels seem to talk about it. Maybe there are some. Anyway, this guy is going to talk about it. They are magnificent. We are going to start doing more and more stuff in the TTY using frame buffers for various things. We're going to be recording screenshots. We're going to be recording video output in the TTY with the frame buffer device. We're going to be playing videos, we're going to watch pictures, we're going to take Link's web browser and we're going to have split screens, we're going to have images on, on, on loaded on a, on a pane, and well not literally a pane, but all this stuff, we're going to be doing it and it will be using the frame buffer device, it will be using um, in all this stuff and we won't you know, load X11 Wayland. It's going to be so good anyway. I think that's enough for now. Uh, I'm going to close out this handsome guy. Um, yeah, just let that sink in, remember? So that's in the TTY. Just uh, frame buffers. Uh, I'm going to keep doing that. Uh, anyway, that's enough for now. Uh, you probably had enough. If you stayed this far in the video, do your fake YouTube thing for me. If you're, not, if you're only ever going to do your fake YouTube thing, do it for the frame buffer video. This is just, this is just like, Sorry, it's just fantastic. Anyway, that's it. Uh, that's enough mind blowing for one day. Sounds so wrong. Anyway, uh, later.